About two months ago, I was a part of an organizing team that made a LARP here in Sweden called Suffragett. And that was a LARP about the suffrage movement in Sweden around 1918. Uh, from the beginning, when we started to talk about this idea, we knew that we wanted to make it a political LARP. Uh, you can't really make a LARP about the women fighting for our right to vote without bringing politic politics into it somehow. And so that showed when we were talking about what goals we had with the game as well. Uh, on top of, you know, we want to make it this a nice experience and all these classical um, goals that you have when you start up and start writing a LARP, like uh, for one example, we wanted to make the participants more familiar with the women who actually lived at that time and made this change in the Swedish society. We had two very important goals. The first one was that we wanted to be focused on inclusion of HBTQ social, economical class and ethnicity because this was a feministic LARP and therefore it was important for us that the whole process and the casting as well was feministic. And the other one was that we wanted to spread the knowledge of LARP as a political tool. And to do that, we needed to reach outside of our own community. Um, we wanted to be including and we wanted to have a lot of people coming to the LARP that wasn't really familiar with LARP as a hobby or a art form. So not only did we go to the typical venues like conferences like this one, uh, we wrote a press release and sent it out to newspapers. And we actually got published in a very small little Swedish uh, art, uh, newspaper called um, Popular History, something like that, who had a little note about us and that made us really exciting. But we also had as a goal to get non-LARPers to the game that had an interest in feminism, feminism. And we wanted them to learn more about the roots of the feministic fight that goes on still today. So we wrote press releases and sent out to all the political parties as well, except one. We don't really have to go into which one. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> since this was a game that took place in the early 20th century, we knew that there was a very big gender difference at that time, and we knew that the presence of men in a room would affect on how women could express themselves if they wanted to stay within the time period that it was set. So all the parts were going to be female. However, obviously, we can't do a feministic LARP where half of the population aren't welcome. So all genders were welcome to play, but they had to play women. And also, we tried to talk about the social economical issue by having differentiated costs depending on the player's economy. And we didn't say any rules that if you have a certain income, you have to cert pay a certain price. We just had three different um, cl price classes and you could decide where in that you fell in. We also said that we wanted to reserve spots for beginners because it was important to us that if we were going to be able to get this LARP out there and involve people who didn't really know what it was to begin with, we needed to make sure that a lot of them actually got the spot, even if the spots to the LARP filled up very quickly, which it did. Uh, so about 20% of the parts were reserved for beginner players. Once again, we didn't decide for people if they were beginners or not, uh, but when you signed up, you had to say how much of a LARPer you felt that you was. Um, we wanted to treat our beginners well. And uh, that we did, I think. I think that a lot of people who were used players and had gone to a lot of LARPs found us really obnoxious <laughs> because we had a tendency to send a lot of information and say the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, we had decided that we wanted a workshop, uh, but it wasn't really enough with one workshop. We had three workshops where you had to go to one, but two was completely voluntary. And at all those times, we had special workshops for the beginners in LARPing. 
and also a small little workshop about being a man walking in a dress and how does that feel because we wanted to make them feel comfortable as well. We spread out the beginners in subgroups with active players surrounding them to give them play and help them. And we also made sure that every subgroup had a personal organizer that the people in that group could turn to with questions. And we even sat down and rang around one week before the LARP to check up on our players and see if they were getting along with their, um, with their place and their different relationships. Um, and since this whole thing was a lot about reaching outside of the play community and getting people involved and realizing that this was something that could give a lot even to political parties, other or organizations. Um, we did some small things that I think a lot of people could use. For example, we contacted researchers in the field. We actually had one uh, professor who is the specialist of the women's movement in Sweden as a LARPer at our game. She had never LARPed before, never heard of it, but we contacted her and told her, this is what we're going to do. Would you like to help us? And she said, yes, this sounds lovely. Let me hold a lecture for you. And by the way, can I come? Of course. Um, we also had a game at the location that made non-LARPers come in contact with the project. We set it up in a museum so that people who went to the museum would hear about it. And also people at the museum would find out that LARPing is something you can do and that can be a tool to give education to other people. And also we had one of our four organizers who was dedicated to PR and writing releases. And uh, the re result was pretty good, I think. This is a picture from uh, the game. Uh, all our different players dressed up. And as you can see, maybe in the far, far right, you have a man with a beard. He was a woman. Everyone was a woman. And it was important to us that people wouldn't feel that they had to change themselves to be able to play. We would be able to create that immersion anyway. And this actually led to a lot of other things. For example, I know that some of the players dressed up in costume and went out uh, protesting on the 8th of March. Um, a little bit inspired by this. And the result was that the people who came, a lot of the beginner players says that they want to go to LARPs again. And I think all of them uh, have a more nuanced build uh, picture of uh, what the feministic movement was and where we come from. 